We are headed into probably the strangest but also greatest period of our lives ever. If you could just grasp how insane the coming period is going to be. History is truly at a turning point. You would understand why this recession truly is a once in a lifetime opportunity to build generational wealth. But only for those that are prepared. And guess what this video is about? How to prepare yourself for the coming recession to not just protect your wealth, but to come out of it 10 times richer. So in today's video, I'll share the three step framework you can use to 10X your wealth during this recession. Also, I will explain why the coming eight to 16 months are the best period to start a business. Starting a business in a recession? Are you crazy? Yes, I'm completely mental, but that's not relevant. What's relevant is that even Richard Branson says, in times of recession, there are massive opportunities and fortunes to be made. So for new up and coming entrepreneurs, this is the time to go and start a business. So today I also share the 10 best businesses you can start in a recession. And finally, I'll share my own personal plan of the coming one to two years of how I intend to grow my net worth during this recession. But first, you need to understand why this recession is so different from all the other recessions. And don't worry, I'm not gonna bombard you with just technical terms like CPI, interest rates, Federal Reserve, central banks, money print, blah, 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 blah. no. But I am gonna explain it in simple terms so you understand what makes this recession so special so you can take advantage of it. So a recession in general means a period of economic decline. That's it. And up until this year, people generally agreed that having two consecutive quarters of negative GDP means you're in a recession. However, this year, the US suddenly decided to tamper with the definition of a recession itself so that it looks like we're not in a recession. We're not in a recession. Cool story, Joe. But we are in a period of economic decline right now, a recession. And just like after every recession, we will have a period of a flourishing market again, because that's the nature of the economy. It's cyclical. In fact, since World War II, the US has gone through more than 10 recessions. Some of those were caused by wars coming to an end and other recessions are caused by high prices of commodities like oil. And then there is the Great Recession of 2008. And this was a big one and an important one to understand as it explains what we can expect to come. It was the longest and most catastrophic economic downturn since the Great Depression. And after 18 months of more than 10% unemployment and GDP shrinking by 4.3%, the economy turned around after massive stimulus spending by the government. More than $1.5 trillion. Oh, and in case you don't know what stimulus spending is, it's when the government spends money to stimulate the economy. Stimulate, spend, spending, stimulus. And where does the money come from? It gets printed out of thin air. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we, as a central bank, we have the ability to create money. $1.5 trillion. How cool would it be if we could print our own money? Well, bad news, you have to work for it, but that's for another time. What you need to know now is that printing money is one of the two levers central banks use to control the economy. And the other lever is interest rates. So a central bank can lower or raise the interest rates or it can print more money or take money out of the circulating supply. But here's what makes this recession so special. Even though inflation is starting to decrease, it's still incredibly high because governments have been printing money like crazy for the last couple of years. But since we're already in a period of high unemployment and low GDP, raising interest rates to curb inflation will only make things worse. Both levers have already been used. Printing money to stimulate the economy will only cause higher inflation and raising interest rates will only cause the economy to crash harder. So we are entering a period of stagflation, a period with high inflation, high unemployment and low economic growth. And we've experienced this before in the 70s, but this time it's different because we have geopolitical issues with the Ukraine-Russia war going on and tension rising with NATO countries, causing instability in all kinds of supply chains. Then we have the whole China zero COVID situation going on, causing supply chain issues as well. But also the fact that China has been on the brink of collapse ah! <laughs> for quite a while now. <laughs> My voice has been on the brink of collapse for quite a while now. Jesus Christ. And since the world has never been more connected as today, we are seeing that high inflation is a global phenomenon, meaning that central banks all over the world are decided to raise interest rates at the same time, causing a synchronized global recession. And that's bad. It's really, really bad. 
because it means there's nowhere to hide. You can't put your money in stocks, the stock market has crashed. You can't put your money in real estate and housing because that bubble is about to burst. Cash is not an option because of inflation and even crypto. It was supposed to be this big inflation hedge, but it's not quite there yet. I mean, it's down 70, 80% since last year. <sighs> So where the hell do you put your money to protect your wealth in this recession? Well, Amazon stocks, because Amazon broke a record just last week of being the first company that has ever lost a trillion dollars in value. But hey, according to Mr. Biden, we're nowhere near a recession. But let's pretend we are. Where do you put your money? Well, this brings me to step number one of the framework. Because let's be honest, for the average working professional, whether or not this is an actual recession probably doesn't even matter to you. Because from the wealthiest top 1% all the way down to the working professional, we're already feeling the pain. Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, these companies that literally changed our lives have lost $5 trillion in market value. And if they are losing value in this climate, do any of our portfolios even stand a chance? And there could be a way to help beat this. It's diversification. And I don't mean the old school stock bond diversification. In fact, that 60-40 stock bond portfolio model, it's down 34% this year. And sure, you could try and buy the dip at a time like this. Value hunting, swing trading. Can you really afford to take a chance when 99% of companies lost value in a single day this year. It's so bad that Goldman Sachs is advising you to reduce your stock allocation to around 45%. So what do they say you should do with the difference? Invest in real assets, like art. They say it can hold and might even increase in value during periods of high inflation. During the last period of high inflation, art appreciated 17.5% per year on average. That's more than real estate and most stocks in that same period. And with today's sponsor, Masterworks, you can invest in million dollar art for a fraction of the cost. Household names like Banksy, Picasso, Monet, I know absolutely nothing about art, but I still know these names. In seven of their last eight exits, Masterworks has delivered over a 17.5% net return to their investors. Like I always say, numbers don't lie. During COVID, a recession, a bear market, can you name one stock that has come close to this number this year? Go ahead, I'll wait. Remember, 99% of companies have lost value this year. So Masterworks is acquiring and offering more art on their platform to meet demand. Over 550,000 people have signed up so far and there is a wait list. But my subscribers can skip the line by clicking the link in the description. So the first step of the three-step framework is diversification and especially into hard asset classes that cannot be printed by the government, like art for example, but also commodities like gold and silver or the housing market and Bitcoin. But didn't you just say that the housing market and crypto have crashed completely? Yes. And that's exactly why you should invest. Because the second step of the framework during a recession is invest your money. You can view this recession as, oh my God, everything has crashed. The housing market has collapsed and stocks are down 40, 50% and crypto is down 80%. Or you can view it as, oh my God, there's a massive Black Friday sale. Everything is discounted for 70, 80%. I'm gonna buy up everything. As I said before, even though the economy has its ups and downs on a long enough time scale, the economy is always growing, meaning prices of especially hard asset classes are always increasing. And it's funny how I always see people online and even my friends and family telling me how they wanna get into crypto and Bitcoin, for example. But when the Bitcoin price is too high, they will say, ah, I missed the boat, I'm too late. It's way too expensive now to get in. I'll wait for the price to fall back down again, then I'll get in. But when it does, when it crashes down, the sentiment changes completely to, ah, Bitcoin is dead. I'm not going to touch this. It's, it's over. And it's been like that for the past 13 years. The Bitcoin market has literally gone from zero dollars all the way to almost $70,000 in a period of 13 years. I mean, you know what Warren Buffett always says, right? Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Or the other one I like is buy when there is blood on the streets. And boy, is there a lot of blood in the streets lately. <laughs> so act accordingly. But if you don't have a lot of money to invest right now, you first need to follow step three of the framework, which is start a cash flow generating business. Whether you're working a nine to five already or not is not relevant because just like those 11,000 people that got laid off at Meta, that could have been you. 
Because no matter how good you are at your job, you have no control over the economy. So you might get laid off during a recession. So your only other option is start a business, but not just any business, a recession proof business. And there are five requirements to make it recession proof. First of all, it needs to be location independent, meaning an online business. Second, it needs to have a low investment to start. During a recession, you don't wanna put all your money you've saved up into your own business. Remember, diversification. Luckily for you, there's a ton of businesses you can start with almost no initial investment. I'll come back to that in a second. First, the third requirement, it needs to be scalable. Basically, you build once, you sell twice. Requirement number four, high profit margins. Simply put, you don't wanna work your ass off for very low profit margins. And not just because it's risky, but because there's literally dozens of online businesses you can start with very high profit margins. I'll come to those in a second, but first, number five, the last requirement, it needs to be in demand, especially during a recession. I wouldn't recommend starting a restaurant, travel blog, or a real estate consulting business during a recession. So keeping all five of those requirements in mind, and the fact that everyone is different and everyone is good at something else, here's 10 businesses you can start right now that are recession proof. Number 10, drop shipping and e-commerce. Might not be the most sexiest and it might be a little bit saturated by now, but there's a lot of videos and educational content out there that will help you get started right away. Number nine, copywriting. Whether it's advertisements, landing pages, or just tweets for someone else. If you're good at writing, I would try copywriting. Website developer. If you're starting out a business in a recession, I'm sure there's other people starting out a business as well and they need a website. Video editors. Whether it's for long form content like YouTube videos or maybe shorts and reels and TikTok videos, there will always be creators that can use the help with their videos. Now, all those things I can mention, you can also make an agency out of them. So instead of doing the video editing yourself or the copywriting yourself, you can also find clients and then find people that are willing to do the work for you for a cheaper price. So you're basically arbitraging how much you can get from a client and how much you pay for someone else to do it. And you get the difference. And the same applies for the next one, graphic design. Every YouTuber needs thumbnails. Every business needs some fancy pantsy graphical design for the website. Running theme pages on Instagram or TikTok. Cool thing is you don't have to post the content yourself you're basically just accumulating really good content and sharing it with the world and eventually when you have enough followers on that theme page you can start asking money for shout outs or advertisements then there's UGC user generated content basically this is the ads you see probably lately on Instagram and TikTok which are ads for businesses but made by users so if you're good at making videos and TikToks you can also make advertisements for companies then there's digital products like ebooks templates Lightroom presets anything you can build build once and then sell as many times as you want. And the same applies to the next one, which is an online course. And number one, of course, becoming a YouTuber, or maybe I hate the term YouTuber, a content creator, bonus business, selling feed pics on OnlyFans. Now, if you've been paying attention, you probably would have noticed that the steps of the three steps framework are in reverse order because actually you first need to start a business to generate money once you have the money you can start investing and once you have investments you can diversify so is there a specific reason that i chose to give the steps in the wrong order no i just suck at good storytelling but also i can do whatever the f i want to do and you know why because i plan on getting enough f you money so i can keep on doing whatever the f i want to do and here's exactly how i plan on doing that by doing exactly what i told you in this video that's it i'm currently growing my youtube channel my business uh, by providing hopefully valuable videos on the topics of financial freedom and personal freedom i work one-on-one -on -one coaching people how to go from being stuck at a nine and five to living their dream life i'm also working on building a course myself that will come out in the near future. I work together with brands like Masterworks, which is all part of step one of the framework, start a business. And step two of the framework is invest the money I earn. And I invest almost all my money I earn with YouTube into video editors, into thumbnail designers, into coaches that help me grow my YouTube channel. I also plan on buying more Bitcoin during this dip. I plan to start buying up more tech stocks and I plan on investing in real estate outside of Holland. And as you can see, that also covers step three of the framework, diversification from crypto to real estate and from my own business to tech stocks and remember guys the most important thing everything i told you in this video is not financial advice financial is just sharing what i plan on doing if you want to see how that plan turns out or if you want to learn more from the lessons i share on my journey from quitting a nine to five to living my dream life then make sure you stick around and i'll see you in the next video cheers